All right, the last type of electron configuration you have to write is one in a condensed form or abbreviated form. And this is where we relate that electron configuration to that of the noble gas that comes before it on the periodic table. Now, this is not like it was with the ion stuff. It's always related to the noble gas that comes before it. So we always have to go backwards on the periodic table to figure out what that is. So let's say we want to write the condensed configuration for sodium. So there's number 11, so we work backwards and we end up doing neon as our abbreviation, as our condensed part. If we were doing selenium, again, we go backwards. So 34, 33, 32, 31, and so on until we get to argon. That's the one that comes before it. And so our abbreviation would be argon, and then we go from there. It's all about knowing the blocks on the periodic table and making sure that you can utilize those blocks to describe atoms. Basically, your first two columns on the periodic table are what are called the S block. They represent electrons being added to the S orbitals. And the number is just the period. That's important to understand. these two boxes would be 4s because we're in the s block and the period is 4. The p block is the next one I'll talk about. Those are the ones that are going in the p orbitals and again it's still just related to period number. This row is 2p because we are in the p block and we are on period 2. The s block and the p block correspond to the actual period number you're on. When you're in the D block, <clears throat> it's considered N minus 1. It's the period number minus 1. So you see 3D here, and the thing about 3D is it is on period 4. But when we go to label these, we have to subtract one from that, and that would be the 3D block. And this is because of the off-bop principle, order of orbitals. You would go 3S, then you would go 3P, and the rule is you have to fill up 4S before you can fill up 3D. So it's all about that order of orbitals, it's all about the off-ball principle, it's making sure that these things are in the right place in the right order. Now, no better way to show you how to do it than to actually just write one of these. Let's do magnesium. So to do the condensed electron configuration for magnesium, the first thing I do is figure out the noble gas. So there's magnesium. We work backwards on the periodic table. 12, 11, 10. Neon is the previous noble gas, so what we do is we put neon in brackets like that. Now for the rest of the configuration, we're using the blocks and period numbers to figure out what to do. Each box on the periodic table is a place to put an electron. That's the way you gotta look at it. You gotta find where magnesium is on your periodic table, and magnesium is right here in that spot. So what we gotta do to finish out this configuration is add two more electrons. And those two more electrons are gonna go in the 3S. Because we're on period three and we're in the S block. That's it, that is the condensed configuration for magnesium. Let me do another one, a relatively small one, oxygen. And again, it starts the same way. We've got to figure out the previous noble gas. So there is oxygen right there. It's number eight. So we go seven, six, five, four, three, two. Helium is the noble gas that came before it. And again, now we've got to find where it is on our periodic table. Oxygen is right there on the periodic table. So what we've got to do is we've got to work across this until we get to oxygen's place. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six more electrons to put in. The first two electrons go here, one and two and they are in the second period in the S block, so it's 2S2. Now we're over here, 
one, two, three, four electrons we're putting in. And since it's second period P block, that's 2P. Two 2P4. Two Let's step it up a notch and do a more complicated one. But what you can see here is it's not all that much more complicated. Let's go to, oh, cobalt. Let's do that one. There's cobalt. Now we work backwards to a noble gas. 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18. Argon. That's our previous noble gas, so that's what we put in the parentheses. Now we're going to find it on our periodic table here. And it is... right there. Now let's do the rest of this configuration. Let's put these electrons where they belong. So we work our way across that period. Electrons 1 and 2 go in 4s. And electrons 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the 9 when we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them go in 3d. Again, it's a matter of remembering that this is one behind the period. So that's not 4D, that's 3D. And you're good to go. That's the quick and easy way to do it. Obviously, when you're working with a regular periodic table, it gets a little bit more challenging. It gets a little bit more difficult because all those S blocks, P blocks, D blocks, and stuff, that's not on there anymore. So you kind of have to figure that out for yourself. Let's do bromine that way. Again, we find bromine on the periodic table. That's right there. We have to work backwards to the noble gas. They're five, they're four, three, three. We're gonna end up at 18. This is the noble gas that comes before bromine, argon. We put it in parentheses. That means it's the same as argon, plus all this extra stuff. Now we're gonna work across its period to get to it. So we're in period four. My first two electrons are right there. This is the S block. The first two are the S block, and we are in period four. So we write 4S2. Now we're going to go all the way across the D block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There'll be 10 electrons there in that D block. Again, we're on period four, but the D is always one behind, so it's 3D, 10. And now we wrap it up. We gotta get to bromine. One, two, three, four, five. We are in the P block now, so it's P5. We're on period four. So we write for P5. Students do find this to be the most challenging one to do because it's something different. It's not like the other ones. If all else fails, all else fails, you can figure this out by just doing a little extra work. Let's say I want to do sulfur. My previous noble gas is neon. So what I would do is go ahead and write the electron configuration for sulfur. That is 16 electrons. If you want us to 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s2, and the last four electrons go in 3p. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. That's the atomic number of sulfur. That's the way you do it. If you don't know how to do those, go back and watch my video on electron configurations. Next thing we gotta do then is look at that previous noble gas. And again, since we're sulfur, we go backwards 15, 16, 15, 14, 13, da, 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 till we get to neon. Write the electron configuration for neon. Neon's got 10 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10. This is neon right here. That's sulfurs, that's neons. To do the abbreviation, you take the neon out of it. You take the neon out of it. 
and write 3s2, 3p4, write what's left after the neon. And again, that's the longer, more difficult way to do it. If you don't ever figure out this periodic table thing, if you're not a visual person, this can be challenging. I know it. I understand that. So if you can't figure that out, doing the periodic table with the blocks and stuff, just write out both electron configurations. Write out the sulfur one, write out the previous noble gas one, and then just take out that previous noble gas. That's what that bracket means anyways. And just write down what's left over. That's a shortcut way to do uh, it. It's a long cut way to do it but one where you don't have to use the periodic table.